talk or we talk about stories that have everybody talking. And we're joined by Susie Falk of the Falk Group, plus Jeff Wagner's back. Topic number one, should that soldier responsible for the murders of the civilians, including women and children, receive the death penalty? This happened in Afghanistan. The U.S. military officials say it is unclear when charges might be filed in this case. A total of 16 Afghan villagers were killed. What do we do with this guy? Well, I mean, I think first of all, I mean, you, you, Afghan authorities want him turned over to them. That, that's just not going to happen. I, I think what you do is you proceed as you have in other cases. You know, you apply the military code of conduct. Now, theoretically, that includes up to the death penalty, and I think that's certainly something that you have to treat, you know, going into it as a potential death penalty case. I think in this situation, there's going to be all sorts of other issues, including, you know, mental competence and ability to appreciate right and wrong. So I don't know that this ends up as a death penalty case, but I think it's something that's got to be on the table. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. But, you know, there's a really big picture here, and that is what's going on over there. I mean, there have been a lot of instances where we're apologizing to the, to the international community about uh, our soldiers over there, and, and I love our soldiers, but I think we've got a little bit of war fatigue going on here, folks, yeah. and um, unfortunately there's going to be repercussions to this latest, no matter what we do about it. Um, I would think that some in Afghan, the, the government there, would like to see him put to death. I personally don't think it's the right thing to do, but, you know, if you don't set that that standard someplace that you can't have crazy um, people going off and shooting 16 pe right. innocent people. This is, it becomes Vietnam again. We've spent so much on this war too. I, I think it's time for us to, to pack up and go home. Well, I do think it also raises one of the, these questions. I mean, th this this the guy that's accused of this is on his fourth deployment. Mm -hmm. um, was involved in a situation where a truck overturned in 2010. Suffered, you know, a traumatic uh, brain injury at the time. I, I do think this. I think you have to take a step back also and look at the effects of the, the equivalent of combat fatigue. I mm -hmm. mean, and, and whether or not you've got to limit this. And I agree with you, Susie. We've got to take another approach and say, okay, maybe is it time to just say, time to move on. We've accomplished as much of the mission as we can accomplish, and, and now it's sure. time to move to whatever the, the next plan the, the is. The tragedy in all this, folks, is that we, we will talk about this guy, and we will probably come to the con conclusion that he is insane. In Afghanistan, they're not looking at him like that. They're looking at him as being indicative of sort of yeah. this whole U.S. military presence there, and it has done us absolutely no good. And so it's it's a tragedy. I'm really sad that this has happened. They they see him, as many of us perceive, oh. a terrorist. Yeah. Absolutely, right. No, no, I'm yeah. not saying he's a right. terrorist, but right. that's, no. that's their perception Good of Good point, him. Steve. You know, there are some wackos over in that country right. that like to, you know, fly into our buildings here, and, and we've got some wackos that would like to destroy them. Okay, so. that's the end of topic number one. All right, coming up next, it's the restaurant review that has everybody talking. We'll tell you why an 85-year-old from North Dakota is an Internet sensation. For dinner tonight, an easy way to make your base hot. Proving once again that guilt is a powerful weapon. Again, we are joined by Susie Falk and Jeff Wagner from News Radio 620 WTMJ. And our next topic a program that turns the homeless into Wi Fi hotspots is stirring some controversy. Some say it's taking advantage of the homeless, others believe it's taking advantage of an opportunity in a new digital age. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> You know, I think it was a good idea that, that went bad. Um, the, the agency that came up with this idea was modeling this, um, this thought after what's called street newspapers, where homeless people go out on the street corners and they sell newspapers called street newspapers, which have editorial content focused on the plight of the homeless. Well, so what they did is they took this into this high-tech convention and decided that these these homeless people should sell, um, you know, wireless, kick, uh, you know, uh, digital for, for, what, $2 for a minute. Now, the problem, I think, happened was the, and these homeless people wanted to participate, but the, the editorial content wasn't there. So, you know, you, you're, you're paying for it, but you don't really know why this guy who, you know, maybe looks like he doesn't have a job is walking around uh, asking for money. I think that's where they went south, but I, it was a nice idea. Yeah, I guess see, I don't see what the controversy is about this. I, I really don't have that much of an issue. They hire these homeless people for twenty dollars plus whatever tips they get. They go into the the tech conference at South by Southwest and they sort of rent themselves out, holding the Wi-Fi stuff. Yeah. To me, this is a lot less demeaning, for example, than the people who you know dress up, you know, get paid to dress up like the Statue of Liberty outside mm -hmm. of the you know the uh, tax preparer stuff and all. To me, it's it's just honest work, and I guess the choice is nobody's making you do it and if you don't want to do it okay then then don't do it sit on the park bench don't collect the money here's the reason I liked it it it, it forced the people at this conference to interact with the homeless mm -hmm. in Austin if you wanted to use the internet you had to go up and approach 
these individuals, they had t-shirts on that said, hi, my name is Clarence, you know, you got to yeah. text this number, you actually have to interact with the homeless. That was one of the goals, to stop the homeless from being ignored and overlooked, and this something that you, you had to address. Yeah, I think there was confusion though. I've been to these conferences and you people are moving a mile a minute and they're trying to check their stocks <laughs> and you know, they're not thinking about the homeless. So it was sort of a disconnect there in terms of what's this guy doing, you know. Good intentions, stuff. but. So, good intentions. I just think the venue was a little funny. A little okay, off. last topic's a fun one. A restaurant <laughs> review by an 84 year old North Dakota newspaper columnist has become the latest internet sensation. That's because her critique was not of some posh five star readery but the Olive Garden. And she and gave it It was reviews. so earnest. It was the most sincere yeah. review of the Olive Garden I've ever read. See, I, I, you know, I, I love this lady because here, here's the thing. My big beef with, with lots of critics, whether it's food critics or whether it's theater critics or movie critics, they tell people what they should like instead of what they do like. Right. This lady goes to the Olive Garden in North Dakota. She has a good meal and she writes a good review of it. Well, okay, lots of people are going to the Olive Garden. A lot more people are going to be going to the Olive Garden in Grand Forks, right. North Dakota than some fancy restaurant that they can't afford. Guess who else loves this woman? Darden, right? The, the restaurant chain owners. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're what are we really reveling about? in this man. And she's out there in New York. The bloggers are following her and she's, you know, enjoying some fine dining and this woman is a gem. Watch the interview. She's great. <laughs> it well, you is know, pretty some, entertaining. You know, it's really funny. When, for example, the local newspaper, when they'll do like their, their reader preferences things, everybody laughs because a lot of times Red Lobster ranks number one. Now, look, I don't think Red Lobster is necessarily the greatest seafood restaurant in Milwaukee. But you know what? If people like going to Red Lobster and they think they get a good meal and they right. think they go to get, get a good, good deal, what's the wrong problem with it? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's I it. I think it's good stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Thinking about buying a new car?